We're about to get into this shit. They go bonkers. They, those books are wild. I definitely could see myself going on a little dragon excursion. <laughs> uh, over I the think fact that I didn't more. know what Lightspeed was. Okay. This is maybe going to come off as super lame for me, but I'm going to go out there anyway. This is going to be chaotic. I don't know what the hell is going on with me. I, yeah. had, I had one glass of wine and I was like, woo. Okay. I mean, magic in the past has just been science we don't understand, right? Let's go be on the first page. Let's go be on the first page. Welcome back, second pagers. This is Beyond the First Page with siblings Phoebe, Isaac, and Phil. And today we have the pleasure of discussing A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. And this is podcast and book club 16. Before we get started, just as a reminder to all of our listeners, please follow us on Spotify, follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and please check out our Instagram for the full book list that we plan to read this year. Also, please feel free to give us any comments. We love to get our listeners' feedback to incorporate different things that people want to hear. And to open our podcast, typically what we'll do is do a little icebreaker to try to get us into the topic at hand, which is a natural history of dragons. And so our icebreaker or just our fun fact or thought for the day is talking about what our favorite mythical creatures are. Phil, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I can start. I'm pretty much just a sucker for dragons. I really dig a good dragon. I like the dragons best when they're like very smart and intelligent dragons and they practice magic. So they exist alongside the humans, maybe as a superior race even. I got a I got a dragon question for you. Do you prefer your dragon species to have four legs and wings separate or their legs and wings together. Yeah, good, good discussion. Four legs, also four talons. Me too. Four is a very uh, important number for dragons. Instead of having any, two legs and, any. and wings. Yeah, instead of having like wings. their front like legs be chicken. like wings. Yeah. Like in Game of Thrones, the dragon's wings are attached to their front legs. Oh, I never noticed that. Yeah, it's BS. Dang. How about you, Isaac? What's your favorite mythical creature? My favorite is a griffin. I like the combo of two very powerful, majestic animals, the lion and the eagle. I also, so my mom's side of the family's, or our mom's side of the family's name is Griffin. So that's a cool little thing there. But in, I've mentioned this book series before, but the Tamara Pierce series, if you fletch your arrow with griffin feathers, it's like magically tuned to, hit whatever you're shooting oh, at. Oh, cool. That's super um, cool. So I, I always thought that was very cool. Um, the hippogriff would be fun, you know, doing Harry Potter, but the reptilian change in there freaks me out a little bit. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. That's a good one. I definitely think the griffin is very symbolic, so that's cool. Um, I kind of like a hobbit or like a gnome. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Interesting. That's not, <laughs> I was that's totally not a honestly before she said it's that. Like humanoid. I was gonna. I was gonna say that Phoebe's gonna say some shit that exists. <laughs> Phoebe's like, I love dolphins. What I was gonna say is gnome, but I also like hobbits too. I, like a, a gnome like, da- like a dad dwarf. would always be like, what? Yeah, dwarf. A dwarf. Like a dwarf. Like a dwarf. Not a dwarf because then I think of the going back to the Lord of the Rings. Uh, the dwarves. You don't like those. No, dwarves. not those dwarves. Not the hardy dwarves. I'm talking about like the cute little mm-hmm. like gnomes that live the in cute your little dwarves. Yeah, Dad always used to call us his gnomies too, like his homies, but his <laughs> gnomies. I don't know. I just think they're cute. Yeah. All right. Not that cool, but I feel okay. like in a pinch they offer a lending. They offer a helping hand when other people won't. That sometimes get the job done at the end. You know, it's an underrated mythical creature yeah different strokes for different folks (laughs) the humble creatures (laughs) yeah Yeah, and so now that we're primed to just really talk about natural history of dragons uh isaac would you just give us a natural history of dragons in 60 seconds yeah all right then a natural history of dragons in 60 seconds 
Isabella has always been fascinated with dragons, but in Skirland, high-class women are supposed to marry and run a household. So that is what she is resigned to do until finding her husband, Jacob, who is almost as interested in the science of life and dragons in particular as she is. They marry, and after a year or so, Jacob is invited on a research trip to the foreign land of Vestrana by Lord Hilford, and Isabella convinces them to take her with them. When they arrive, things are already amiss. Firstly, their contact from the Vestranian government is missing, and they're immediately attacked by a dragon, which is very uncharacteristic of the species. After some small discoveries and a misstep that leads the townspeople thinking that Isabella has been cursed by an ancient demon, the small band of researchers uncovers and spoils a plot by the corrupt government overseer that could mean disaster for the rockworm dragons that live in the area. Yeah. I think I just wanted to say, to characterize our main character getting into this, uh, I don't know if sassy would be the right word, but she's she's got some spunk and she's ahead of her time. She, we'll talk a little bit like about her, you know, she's kind of selfish. Like Isaac mentioned, she's upper class. Uh, I think it, to me, it immediately endeared me to her. Yeah. So I guess, do did we like the selfish main character and i think we would describe her as selfish so we would categorize her as all of those things in my opinion spunky ahead of her time very intelligent entertaining to listen to in my opinion what did, what were your guys thoughts i think isaac you kind of had this idea that she was selfish and what that brought to the story yeah so this was a struggle for me because um one, I understand that you need a main character to have those characteristics of somewhat of an alpha because they drive the story. So purely from a logistical standpoint of writing a book, a character needs to have, I like the word spunk, that actually makes it sound, I wish I would have thought of her that way and I probably would have even brought up this point. And there, so I think a lot of book characters are this way. But for whatever reason, and it may have been, and we'll talk about this later, the way the book was written in a memoir format. I, I very early on in the book was almost annoyed at her because it was like, everything is all about me. Woe is me. I'm going to go off and do these things. And as, as the stories unfold, she does things that are, could be, yeah, definitely considered selfish and lead to some pretty disastrous results. One of them being her husband dying. Yeah. But way even before that, I have this feeling. And I'm torn because I don't know if that is necessarily fair to her. But I read her that way, and it made me fight against the story a little hmm. bit. That's tricky. So I think, personally, she's hilarious. I thought she was really funny. Just one quote is just so quick. But this is her wit. She is talking about a disease and she just says diseases of an unromantic sort. And she'll just say stuff like that that I think is like really clever and funny. Mm -hmm. um, I think actually that this is Isaac's point of this reading like she has done no fault but has obviously faulted is a little bit like a memoir. I think Mary Brennan is a little bit poking fun at the memoir. Yeah, mm. I, I do think it's very intentional that like, this is me and I am rich and famous now. And and she even has that. She's like, I'll I'll publish whatever my, I want to publish. Um, and the publisher will have to go along with it. And I think that that's like a little bit of what a memoir is. Um, I mean, yeah, I I hundred percent agree. It's very biased. And I think that she does that without... I, I do think she straddles it at some points. I don't think she's unlikable as a character. I do think she's a bit annoying as a character or sort of in, in some points unlikable. But I do think she has her redeeming qualities, even in the faults, where she realizes, wow, I really mistreated this woman and just didn't think of her as someone smart. And I think that she even says a couple of times, had I listened to the townspeople, this never would have happened. Or had I treated them with more than just mild contempt, this would have never happened. Um, so I think that she's a little bit 
uh, poking fun, but I can see if you, it's hard to fall out of that funk for a character. I will definitely give you that, Isaac. When you think somebody's sort of annoying and selfish, it's, unless there's a very dramatic reckoning, it's hard to fall out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I think Phil, you hit it right on. I think that the, the memoir style aids to that. And I'm, I am assuming, and I'm giving, going to give the author credit that it is written in that way. And I, I, that is, I think really cool. Uh, I also do want to say, I didn't necessarily not like her. Mm -hmm. I just pushed against liking her because I do enjoy reading about both fake and real people that love something and go after it and have that drive this you know outside thing in this case it's dragons that this woman is like i am going to do all this i'm going to screw the you know way of life i'm going to go after all these things and go after it. i think that's very admirable i just got what kind of got me and what kind of brought up this talking talking point for me was that the obvious wake around her even early on was there and was just like, okay, woman, I respect the enthusiasm, but you take a step outside yourself real quick here and look at what's going on. And there's, a, yeah. a, and that is maybe more of a life lesson, but obviously this is a fake book uh, <laughs> and not actually true, but you, you do see this in real life. And I think uh, maybe that's what made me push against it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I like that you said that you see this in real life, Isaac, because my thought on her as a character was she was, and also Phil, you talking about how this is a memoir style that was intentional, that she was supposed to be kind of this, in the retrospection, she was looking back and saying, would I do this again the same way? Yeah, yeah, I would, because I'm freaking awesome, you know? I think she was such a believable character. Even just her being scared of the dragon right away when they get first get attacked i thought that was so well written in the fact that a lot of times you get in, you start reading these fantasy stories and it's like the harry potter the like expelliarmus versus the avada kedavra like you, that's never gonna freaking work and it, this is not believable <laughs> that that would happen yet in this book, you're yeah. like, this is believable that this girl is kind of scared shitless. And also from the female perspective, like she's just trying to earn her wake here. She's going to take notes. She's going to draw the pictures. Like she's not going to be this freaking hero. She's going to be like maybe a little bit people are going to get in her wake of, of making these kind of, you know, selfish choices. But I think overall, super believable. And I think both of your points uh, are right on the money as far as, you know, the memoir and just – this like think things through i also feel like it's almost like teeing up the series right because we're we also have this element of this is a yeah. series book uh she's this is her first expedition she's learning a lot from it so i think it's also te teeing her up as a character that you could grow to to like so yeah i think yeah, i want to just advance one more thing with that phoebe that i think you have such a good point where these people are very believable and i think one of those points was Tom Wilker, who basically is Lord Hilford's um, assistant, and he's from a working class background. And one of the things that she obviously comes to after she writes, and she says this, I didn't realize this at the time, but now I do, is I was a woman and I was at a super disadvantage. At times, his working class disadvantage was even greater than mine from being like an aristocratic woman. Yeah. And I think that that's such a real thing. Anybody at a disadvantage has a very tough time realizing, wow, it's bad for me. It could even be worse for, for somebody else. else. But I liked and that. It's I liked, Phil, not to cut you off. Sorry. I liked that it wasn't in your face because I do think the last few books we've read have been these very complex social structures that we're talking about. Yeah. And so like this, this still kept it within the fantasy, fun, light realm. But it did have these mm. glances into real life, making it more believable so I, I didn't think it was too in Which, your fate i mean not that that's a problem but just i think what we were looking for in this book was kind of a reprieve and just an escape and phoebe i think that's a perfect transition to what i look like look for in a fantasy book and one of the elements that i do look for is 
real world problems slash dynamics that I don't think like it makes a world really hard to believe if let's just take Harry Potter because everyone knows it. If wizards didn't look down on muggles, like, are you kidding me? That's not believable at all. There's no way there's not a social structure when one of you can do magic. And I think that those little elements really help solidify what I do look for. And it doesn't have to be discrimination. That's a pretty popular one, especially with mixed species fantasy books. But another one is corruption. Like when you have a really rich, benevolent ruler. And honestly... This is one of the reasons I hate Lord of the Rings. I I love the movies. The books are trash. Hot take right here. <laughs> it's a hot take for sure. But I mean, Gandalf is just pure benevolence and Sauron is just pure evil. And like, that's not realistic at all. Nobody is just purely one thing. But don't um, you feel like Dumbledore was that too? Like Dumbledore no, was pure. Dumbledore was very flawed. I mean, agree to disagree. I love Lord of the Rings, but. Yeah, no, it definitely isn't agree to disagree. I'm in the minority here. Lord of the Rings is super popular, but I do love, I guess, fallibility, like real world problems, fallibility with characters, fallibility with the world. Um, I have a couple other elements that I really look for in fantasies, but I'll, I'll let you guys talk. Well, now I'm kind of curious. What are the other elements? Oh, okay. So one of the Tell elements I think that a fantasy has to have is just if you're going to be making everything up from the from scratch, I do think you need to have a little bit more deception, betrayal, plot twists. I think with plot, the plot needs to be pretty active in changing. And I think the last thing that I wanted to say is I definitely am a sucker for fantasy tropes, whether that be the mentor trope or the academy trope. I would yeah. read, it, it, oh my gosh, kids going to school and learning magic or learning how to be a warrior every time it gets me. Like, we'll tear through that book. Um And then also love the monster or just this one very bad person that they have to fight like a, a very obvious enemy yeah i would agree with that i think the school th i mean harry potter has teed that up for the rest of existence i think for me it's i almost am at the point where i'm looking for something authentic like authentic something new something i haven't heard ever thought of i thought that um like the ve schwab the darker shades of magic trilogy or something like a Mistborn where they're using metal to create magic. Something like that's very unique. I think that's what I'm looking for. Just a, a concept that I'm like, wow, I never even thought of magic or another element in that way. But I will say I don't like us, and this is different, but it's like a sci-fi. I'm not looking for an alternate universe. I want it to be purely fantastical. But I think, yeah, just something I don't necessarily, I couldn't pinpoint one thing but then i'm also looking for a bit of a romantic element i would say that definitely is the case for me i i think it's just yeah that's just a worthwhile worthwhile thing to keep me kind of hooked on a series is like a long drawn out like are they going to be together are they not going to be together so yeah i would say authenticity and a slight romance not an overpowering you know that this is suddenly become about this romance but just throw, sprinkled in just because I want to clarify, because I think you you might not have, but just from my conversations with you, uh, come across you you don't like sci fi, but that doesn't mean that you don't like different universes because Middle Earth is a different universe. But if um, it's like super fantastical, where I'm thinking more of like a dark matter, I forget who it's by, but if you've ever a dark matter, he's opening up doors into different universe, like different realities and so that's obviously yeah. sci-fi then but what about like the golden compass would that be fantasy or sci-fi fantasy because isn't the golden compass where they each oh, have her own... interesting wait which have you read all three golden compasses i think a long time ago well there's only one golden compass but there's well true the amber yes. spyglass and the subtle knife the subtle but... knife um <laughs> I, don't know if I, have. I think you would dis i think you would dislike the subtle knife and the amber spyglass phoebe they go bonkers 
they those books are wild. I read them in seventh grade and just yeah. remember being like, those are over my head. Well, I was just thinking about the fact that you read the dad let you listen to the Da Vinci Code when you were 10. I was still like thinking about that later. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, I wholly agree with you, Phoebe. I think that uh, I, I don't know if I dislike them, but that's definitely a different genre. Once you're jumping into different worlds and stuff, that is. Uh, but if you're using science to do that, it's sci fi. If you're using magic to do that, it's fantasy. Even if it's fake science, like Star Wars. <laughs> light speed is science no but but, but, but star wars is definitely (laughs) sci-fi or not sorry light speed is not fake Uh, like it's real real. it's what's it when they (laughs) jump to hyperspace hyperspeed yeah i don't think that it's as um yeah we are unsure about the delineation there um there was yeah. a. Point. It's tough. There, there is a little bit of a gray area. I was just going to say the big thing I look for in a fantasy is that sense of adventure. When you, as the reader, are like, "All right, we are on a trip now." <laughs> yeah. uh, and I also, I don't know how to describe this, but this is maybe going to come off as super lame for me, but I'm going to go out there anyway. I like to be able to see myself as the <laughs> main character. <laughs> No, I Wait, love so I like to be I, able this to is leading to all of the reasons why you don't like a female lead. <laughs> like this makes total. <laughs> but no, I, I, I'm cool. I am cool with the female lead. But I do like the like I love the Alana. Like I'll bring up the Alana ones. But I can see myself as this knight who is in his own way fighting against the system that is. I think that's the cool going thing on about those, fantasy. There's that sense of an adventure. The yeah, but. There are some fantasy books, and I, I don't know if I can think of any right now, but I've, I've read books where like, I just can't see myself. I can't drop myself into. And so maybe that's a talk on the world building. It's a talk on the writing to be able to understand kind of what the characters are feeling. Um, but yeah, that sense of adventure and then the sense that I could put myself as that main character and continue on in that adventure. Um are two of the things that like I look for in a fantasy and then I also get the most out of Yeah. Yeah. So then I would counter your your uh point there, Isaac, with um did you see yourself in this fantasy? Could you see yourself in this as yeah, this character? I could not see myself as this character. Yeah, me neither. I could see myself in the world though. Yeah, in the world, okay. Is that yeah. good enough? It was good enough. Yeah. Like I'll keep yeah. reading this book. And- and I think it maybe goes to what Phoebe's saying, what was the realistic view too. It could be a different, slightly different way of thinking of that same idea of like, if this world was real, is this realistic? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what is, I think um, of the Assassin's Apprentice series that you'll talk about later, Isaac, because uh, you're reading it now. Obviously, as a girl, am I seeing myself as that character? No, but I think there's characters that I can relate to and I can relate to him. Maybe it's like a relatability for me more so than like, can I be this character? Because you can relate to the underdog, which I think a lot of the fantasy tropes are is is this underdog idea. So, but as far as this book, I am not a scientist or do I have any interest in being a scientist? So it is, and that was heavy for me. It was, I think, and I don't, if you guys have anything, if you don't have anything else, we could get into the ratings. I I just Um, think it's worth mentioning the memoir, like the writing style. Like I thought it was a unique style of writing. Yeah. I I thought that was like the coolest part. That was the coolest part of like all together of the book for me, I think. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'll talk and say that in my rating. No, but that's true. And also, yeah. I th- I think it speaks to my point of originality, which is why I would maybe still keep reading this series is because of that. Uh, that, yeah, it's just super original idea and concept and no one else is really doing that. So I like that approach. The naturalist is cool. So it was a one for me. I really want to rate this book. It was a one for me. And yeah. the reason it was a one, and I, I, but I think I would still finish the series, was uh, I talked about this last week on the podcast, I believe. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies is a copy and paste of this book. But I think this book predates it. So actually, it's the reverse. But I read the Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. 
which was supposed to be an academic journal, which turns into just her journaling about her experience. But I think there is an element where it, you got to think about, I mean, I know this is fantasy, but at the time, no one in, in the same in this case with Lady Trent is no one has any idea about dragons. So while it's not scientific in nature, I think o- people who are interested in science would read this because she's talking about the behaviors of dragons, which at the time, I guess at the time it was published now because she's doing it after the fact, people know about dragons. But for this book that I read, the Emily Wilde's book, um, she's discovering new fairy realms. And so she's doing a scientific documentation. And I thought that that book was a bit more captivating. That's all I'll say. I think this book took uh, – I said that's all I'll say. I've been droning on for like 20 minutes. I think this book just took – It took way too long for me to get to where I cared at all about what was going on. And then once it did start, I did start caring. It was one scene and then it was over. And uh, yeah, it just, I think it was just, it didn't capture me. And I was disappointed because Phil, your recommendations never miss. Well, my recommendation missed then. I I will (laughs) say, I think if you guys do read the rest of the series, it, it, gets so much stronger in my opinion from an adventure standpoint for sure this one is so slow i mean by the third book she's parasailing into dragon coves it's just she's just much more legit i guess yeah um this it is felt like, like her, a necessary like, tee up though i mean I, i'll it, give it, it that is. Yeah, and for I, sure yeah for me it was a three because by strict definition I did read it again and also it's so hard for me to separate this from the rest of the series which I did love. Mm -hmm. Um, So for me, a three. So I'm a two, which is cool. We each had a different Mm -hmm. rating. Uh, And it's a two because mostly because of the memoir portion. I think that was like, that is the first kind of um, from a fantasy idea that I have ever experienced. And I thought the idea of it was incredible. Mm -hmm. Um, So then because of that, even though I was kind of pushing against this character the whole time, I was giving the story the benefit of the doubt. Even if we weren't reading it for the book club, I would have finished it, uh, like this book, 100%. I will continue to read the rest of the series because I think I think BB said it perfectly that a necessary tee up is such a cool term, but I to really like set the stage for the rest of the series going forward. And we talked about the character development of Isabel or Isabella. Isabella. Um, I think that she will grow on me and i'm giving that all to the benefit of the doubt of the author because of her superb idea of doing this memoir style yeah book also we we were we were talking about could you see yourself as the person i could not see myself as her exactly but i definitely could see myself going on a little dragon excursion (laughs) you know like dragon safari or something I mean, so. I dabble. I dabble. <laughs> and- I mean, also, just I think that her husband dying was a completely necessary element to to be able to continue as well because he was only holding her back, kind of. I mean, now she's a widow, which she'll have a lot more rights, I think, and she'll kind of just be able to do whatever she wants, which the end suggested because Lord Hilford is gonna fund the next expedition for her and he wants her to come along so i think the husband dying was a definitely necessary evil i am really excited for you guys to read it if if we do you guys read the rest of the series and would like to bring it up on a future podcast to sort of uh, solidify about just a little bit um because i think all the points that you're looking forward to might happen i think she delivers but again who knows Uh, i I think my one of the knocks i would have outside of what we talked about is run into that many dragons True. i was the, i was the, True. looking the for a little bit more dragons <laughs> more dragons <laughs> but the necessary to you yeah. so we'll yeah. see yeah yeah well i already told you guys what i would recommend i would recommend emily wilde's encyclopedia of fairies uh very sim by heather fawcett it's very similar character uh but just talking about fairies instead of dragons and this is very cool because there's all different kinds of fairies at every level from very dangerous ones to like woodland little uh, fairies that are helpful, which I kind of talked about in my mythical creature. 
Um, and then Phil, I won't steal your thunder and I'll let you. Yeah. The Tamarera series by Naomi Novik. Yeah. It's dragons, but it's also set in like a uh, faux England. Well, it is actually England, mm-hmm. but during the Napoleonic Wars, so both sides are fighting each other with dragons. It's super cool. And um, I would agree too, because it's um, that series book to book. You can kind of, you're kind of like, all right, let's get through this. Get, yeah. Some of the parts are like, okay, and then it picks up with the battle and the, there's elements of new dragons being introduced, which is cool, but very right. similar feel as far as the writing, I would agree. Yeah, and then the second one is Tower of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. This one is really adventurous and almost a mix between The Trial by Franz Kafka and a fun fantasy novel, which is a hard concept to get around. But it, it has the same feel, a lot of adventure, um, sort of set from a haughty slash aristocratic, uh, flawed main character vibe. But um, those are the two I would recommend. Isaac, what would you recommend? So I would recommend The Ministry for the Future. It's by Kim Stanley Robinson. Have either of you guys read this no. book? No, I am. Heck yeah. All right. That's a first <laughs> for one. For sure. Um, This is one of my top five favorite books. Wow. Um, Shit. It is a, so I recommend it because it's a similar style of a not, if it is a fiction book written in a nonfiction way. Mm. And it's like 30 or 40 years in the future of planet Earth. So it's not fantasy. And it's a bunch of meeting notes, personal letters, journal entries, news articles, a combination of that stuff of a world disaster, like environmental event, Hmm. and then how the world comes together to combat it. And one, it is not a, it's not an easy read and it will scare the hell out of you because you're like, "Ah, this is all could be very true. Yeah. Yeah. And it, but it is so cool, again, just like so clever the way the author puts everything together and terrifying because we are all going to burn. Like they're in the actions of these countries like the United States and stuff with just they have they just do, do nothing when this catastrophic heat wave hits India is how the book dang. starts. Um, it's just like, dang, this is exactly how things would go down if we don't change now. Um but yeah, it is, it's awesome. I could not recommend it highly enough. But I think you would like it as well. With it. Not fantasy, but fiction writing in a nonfiction form. Dang. I'll cool. definitely read that. That sounds good. Phil, do you want to talk to us about what you're reading now that you enjoyed? Yeah, so I just tore through two different trilogies since we last met. So the first one is uh, Grey Sister by Mark Lawrence, which I I almost want to just put, if you like good books, you would like this. I I can't imagine anyone not liking this, but I guess if you like something like Age of Assassins by R.J. Barker or The Blood Song by Anthony Ryan or even any Sebastian de Castell, Trader's Blade is what I was thinking, you would like it. It's got all the tropes, got all the like great, uh surprises i don't know just really likable female lead um wait phil is this the one about the nuns that fight okay yeah it's awesome (laughs) um then the second one i just finished was dragon slayer which is a series by this new english author I, i really liked it isaac i definitely if you want if you're looking for a character you could see yourself in for sure this dude just extreme sense of honor Drinks a little too much, like a little it's just added too much. I'm just teasing. <laughs> no, but like a little bit, a little bit past his prime. But by the end of it, he like comes back and it's like, <laughs> all right. When I said I could see myself, I wasn't going to just take all care. I'm not looking for characters with the same attributes, flawed or excellent qualities <laughs> but as but me. The- um, no, I'm just teasing you, Isaac. Uh, but I do think I saw myself a lot in this character, just like sort of like well, dude. knows the right thing to do does not do the right thing, regrets it immediately, but sometimes does the right thing. Obviously, he's a hero, but um, yeah, I thought it was a, it was a good, and it had dragons, so I fucked with it. Yeah. 
I, that was like a w- w- roller coaster of an assessment for, for Isaac. Yeah. <laughs> Does the wrong thing, <laughs> drinks too much, <laughs> past his prime. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you're, you, it looks like Isaac, you just finished the Royal Assassin. And uh, I think that's like a perfect character, like we were talking about earlier with the Fitz and just that whole world that you get introduced to with him, I think is just. It's so relatable. It's so good. It's so fab. I mean, it's just such a fabulous uh, character, I think. Yeah. And then there's just like that little element in there of the skilling and the, um, the wit, the witting. Right. And so, yeah, I just finished Royal Assassin. It's by Robin Hobb. It's the second in the Farseer trilogy. If you like this, I just said really any other like medieval time based fantasies, you're going to like this one. It's it's great. It has the qualities of the fantasy books that we've talked about. And it takes you on an adventure. I like Phil said it's like if you like a good book, you'll like those books that you just mentioned. So, yeah, I just finished uh, Night Watch well, a little bit ago, but I wanted to share with our readers. It's the Pulitzer Prize winner for fiction of 2024. And it is about a, it's West, set in West Virginia, about a woman who uh, goes to this, an asylum post the Civil War. A uh, very interesting book. If you liked The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes or 1000 White Women by Jim Fergus, you would like that. Because uh, both those books, the one is from West Virginia. It talks about just the, the ruralness of West Virginia during that time period is very interesting. And then also uh, women being put in asylums and people who didn't, shouldn't have been in asylums being put in asylums. So it touches on all that. It's fictional though. And very good book would recommend it to anybody. And we will now talk about uh, what we are reading next time before we go. And I will just say before Isaac tells us about this, Begin reading now because this is a deep dive and it is 20. Well, if you're this. listening to it at 1.75 speed reviews. like me, it is 26 hours long. So Isaac will be listening for 44 if hours. If you're listening at one speed, <laughs> it's 44 yeah. hours. I'm at 1.25 now, Whoa. so 37 hours. Nice, nice. Yep. Isaac, will you tell us a little I'm bit ab- about uh, the Van Gogh, The Life? We're reading Van Gogh, The Life by Stephen Naife and Gregory White Smith. It is a comprehensive narrative of the life of Vincent Van Gogh, discussing his personal life, his artwork, and sharing a controversial theory on his death. Yeah. Uh, and as I mentioned, just get started now because it is very comprehensive in every sense of the word. Um, so excited to read about that. I went to the Van Gogh Museum last year and so have a little bit of understanding about him, but definitely an interesting guy. So very excited to talk about all of talk about that with all of you next time we meet and until then this is your bi-weekly reminder to call somebody that you love maybe that's your sibling tell them that you love them and about a good book that you've recently read maybe it's a natural history of dragons and until we meet again stay classy second pagers we'll see you later bye guys see you guys let's go be a